uh, move your cursor uh, closer to your name. You can see, uh, yeah, there, now there are, there are two. 34, Guyana is not a presenter. Not in our. Yeah, it's not in district. our. Yes. Yeah, only one presenter is there. Yeah, yeah. Is that the second one? Is that that's the second one? Yes. When I open university, that may be from that first one. She was there. Yeah, that they. I don't. That was disconnected. Now, this got that that person got disconnected no. from the Hana University. I think Gayani is okay. not a presenter in our uh, session. Gayani, you should. Uh, Name you as a participant if you want to be in this session. Because you are not a presenter for this session. Gaini? Gaini P. Gamage. I remember, so Gaini is another session. Uh, the first presenter comes. Shall we start yeah. them? Because yeah, 22. 22. Uh, Min Tao has come. Yes. Yeah. Shall we start now? There are two presenters now already. Yeah, the time is 11.05, no? Yeah. You yeah. are 20 minutes uh, late. Uh, yeah. But without any participants to at least to hear it and anyway, the two participants available yeah. we'll start we'll start first so welcome to the here also the conference and then have the all together five then already the available now the two presenters first and second because this uh, promoting sustainable development through lifelong sessions and there are five Thank papers you. and role of lifelong learning affecting the higher education chain over technical staff Adults' informal learning achievement using traditional ecological knowledge and cooperative nursing professional education at four years. So, I would like to welcome the first presenters. ID 22, Zmin Tam. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are from Hanoi Open University, Vietnam. Today, we are very proud to be here in first online AOU conference to present our research about lifelong learning in sustainable development of Vietnamese education. There are four contents in our presentation. Introduction, literature review, lifelong learning in building the educational system development in Vietnam and conclusion we will try to shorten as much as possible to save more time for the most important part we all know that nowadays lifelong learning is a very popular definition and appear in every countries lifelong learning will create opportunities for all to cope with the challenge of the new era and be identified as an important part of the national education system of countries, including Vietnam. In our research, we would like to impress on sust sustainability and uh, related to lifelong learning with sustainable 
sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And lifelong learning is defined as all learning activity undertaken throughout life with the aim of improving knowledge, skills, and competency with a person, uh, with a personal, civic, social, and uh, employment-related perspective. <coughs> In Vietnam, after 25 years of reform, Vietnam has changed fundamentally from a centralized, subsidized economy to a socialist oriented market economy. This process affects and profoundly affects the entire education system, in particular and creates a new open education in general. Building a learning society and lifelong learning is an important strategy for sustained development of education. In uh, 2010s, uh, we completed lower secondary education universe Salization, which established a solid foundation for lifelong learning. Heading to build uh, the sustained development education in Vietnam means building the education of comprehensive and integrated lifelong learning society, a society in which all people's learning needs are everywhere, all time are met. The social learning model has just been born but has proved to be an effective modeling, uh, building a lifelong learning society based on four basic requirements, uh, the four pillars that the nation, uh, National Committee Education in the 21st century re refers to. That is, learn to know, learn to do, learn to live together, and learn to be human. Currently, Vietnam had increased the number of universities with distance education programs. There are two open universities which play a central role in expansion of distance education across Vietnam, Hanoi Open University and Ho Chi Minh City Open University. The Ministry of Education and Training assumed the organization and management of the whole distance education system while the Vietnam National Institute of Open Learning gives essential direction to the whole system of distant education. The fourth industrial revolution rest opportunity for social learning. The powerful and miraculous development of technology has changed the position of education and training. Requirements of the knowledge, uh, economy and science technology change the a perception of the quality of education training. The decision maker is the human resources to be trained in the aid of digitalization and globalization, and intellectual resources is a new organizational model of learning. Learner holds a central position to both approach and construct knowledge. Learner has the advantage to connect the known and unknown between traditional and modern, between real and virtual, to chew appropriately to form new knowledge and skills to suit their work needs. In the conclusion, in the conclusion, we think that building a learning society is building an educational system that ensures all citizens have lifelong learning in that system. There are corresponding policies and mechanisms mechanism to ensure all people contribute to the development of regular uh, learning forms in all population areas. After 15 years of development, fondness and learning encouragement model have been confirmed as motivational factors for promoting lifelong learning in residential community in Vietnam. Thank you for your listening. With all of you, safe and healthy.
Professor Siolo Gutasen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, screen not playing. Hello. Can Hello, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Please stop the sharing. Contribute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Kosh, you can stop the sharing. The presenter can uh, open his video so that we can see uh, us. We can see you. The presenter. We would like to see you, your face. Okay. okay. Thank morning. you very much. Good yeah. morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for presenting this uh, role of lifelong learnings and, and practice and experience through the Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, any questions from forum, open to forums, any questions or any clarification, please. No one? Yeah, thank you. No one have any questions. Uh, so we, we are running limited time. So I would like to ask a small, uh, just not a question they're asking. And yeah, in your presentation role of lifelong learning. And <laughs> so can you explain how, how this to bring your experience to these Asian countries, those other countries? Uh, especially East Asia and South Asia, the sustainable development and the lifelong growth. Yes, Minta. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can hear you. now. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat as a question? Yeah, thank you? you for your presentation. Thank you for interesting presentation. I just concerned about how you just bring your experience in Vietnam experience. How can it transform to the East Asia or the South Asia, the country is sustained and the development through lifelong learning? Any idea? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. The voice is not, not good here. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we will, so Naina, we will start next to you for now. It's 11 oh, okay. uh, You can stop this chairing, uh, this procession, and the bench. Thank you. Then second presenters, I would like to invite the uh, affecting high em employee turnover, the staff, the technical staff, and Ms. Ravi, I hope you, uh, ID number 6169, Ravi Ramsey and others. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, I am Reverend Sishodhana Labor Janage. Our abstract number is 169, and the sub theme is promoting sustainable development through lifelong learning. This is the table of contents. So when we are talking about our research topic, it is factors affecting the high employee turnover among technical staff of Sri Lanka Rupan Corporation, which focus on the significance of sustainable development through lifelong learning processes. Following that, these are the research questions and research objectives. First one is, what are the factors affecting the intention to leave among the technical staff of SLRC, which is Sri Lanka Rupan Corporation? And the second one is, what is the most influencing factor which affected the internship leave among the technical staff of SLRC? And the third one is, what is the impact of poor sustainable development through inadequate lifelong procedures on internship to leave among the technical staff of SLRC? So, when we're talking about bad 
background and significance of this particular study. Since Sri Lanka Rupahani Corporation is one of the largest television broadcasters in Sri Lanka, highly skillful technical officers are much more crucial for the organizational success. Basically, there are more than 120 technical staff who have been given a thorough training by this particular organization in an annual basis. But after the training period, a lot of employees tend to leave the organization. So after referring to this particular scenario, the purpose of this research was to find out the actual reasons behind the intention to leave of the technical staff of SLRC in order to ensure the sustainable development through lifelong learning procedures since getting and keeping good people within the company is critical to the success of every organization. Employees are company's intellectual capital. So they are not only bringing their skills and talents, they also bring ideas, creativity, innovation, commitment and desire to learn as well. So human resources are one of the most valuable resources of an organization and indeed an organization is nothing without them. Research design of the investigation was the descriptive study since descriptive research explored phenomena in their natural environment without using the scientific method and it led to think systematically about the particular aspect, offered ideas for further research and helped to make certain decisions in the future as well. Study setting was the non contrived setting or the natural setting since the research was done in the natural environment where events proceeded normally. When considering on the research choice or the methodological choice, this investigation tended to be a more qualitative approach than quantitative or vice versa since this research studied the factors affecting the intention to leave. And also, this study was planned to apply the case study strategy as the research strategy which consisted of a detailed investigation within the organization. So, case of this study was Sri Lanka Rupwani Corporation. When we are talking about the data collection specifically, in this investigation, all the employees working on site, including more than 120 technical staff, could be emphasized as the population and also the sample of the study was 5 technical officers and also 6 executive officers, including acting deputy director general engineering, engineer transmission, engineer control, engineer outside broadcasting, chief engineer operation and also assistant director of the administration department at SLRC. Non probability sampling techniques were used as the sampling technique since the probability of each case being selected from the total population was not known. Interview method and the observation method were utilized as data collection methods via the thematic analysis was the data analytical technique that was utilized here. It emphasized pinpointing, examining and recording patterns or themes within data. As responsible researchers, we have the responsibility to protect participants in this research study via maintaining ethical consideration by ensuring fellows. First one is the participants of the study were briefed about the nature of the study before collecting data and participants were selected only by obtaining direct or substitute consent or the valid consent. Researchers ensured that the person giving the consent had sufficient mental competence or capacity to understand and retain relevant information on the research as well. Furthermore, ensuring the protection from harm and protecting privacy and confidentiality, participants' autonomy and dignity were considered as more important and opportunity to ask questions and complete information were provided to the participants as well. When we are considering on analysis and findings of this particular research, there were different themes considered under them. First one is the connectedness of the monetary and non-monetary benefits with the intention to leave. Uh, when you are concerned in this monetary benefits aspect, there is a higher degree of importance of the monetary benefits on deciding the intention to leave of the technical employees. SLRC is still utilizing the salary scales introduced by the MSP, which is Management Services Department. They look at the position of technical employees within the organization as a very common position. Therefore, they set salary levels of technical employees at a very lower level. But in other organizations such as Electricity Board, Water Board, Telecom, they are giving higher salaries for technical employees compared to SLRC. Therefore, obviously, employees tend to leave the organization. 
when you are talking about the non-monetary benefits, this impact of insufficient facilities or inadequate non-monetary benefits lead employees to leave the organization and that concept has been backed up by different research participants as well. So as per this investigation, SLRC also provides some facilities but they are not much enough to start up anything. The uncomfortable working hours, lack of transportation facilities, lack of career development paths have also become major issues to the technical employees to leave the organization. Second theme is the interrelationship between the work environment and the intention to leave. So first up theme is the effectiveness of the bond on retaining technical employees within the organization. So even though they have a bond established by the organization, it has become an ineffective strategy. Second sub theme is these consequences of inconvenient working hours on intention to leave. So the second basic characteristic that all employees responded about this inconvenient working hours. Those inconvenient labor hours may lead to increased health problems, safety risk, absenteeism, turnover rates as well. So the third sub-theme is the effect of insufficient technical updates and faulty equipment on intention to leave. So in here, technical employees have to work with equipment which are 20 or 30 years old. So a lot of them are faulty ones. Sometimes when they try to work with those equipment, they have to face many issues and in those situations, they are facing a job stress. So the third theme is the relevance of person environment fit for determining the intention to leave. In this segment, the lack of proper leadership, insufficient organizational performance appraisal activities, weak relationship in between the management and technical officers that lead to the turnover of technical employees at SLRC have been emphasized. The lack of sustainable development practices via insufficient training and learning opportunities have been discussed here thoroughly. Last uh, theme is these consequences of the intention to leave on the organizational performance. This turnover ratio is a huge burden to Rupohini Corporation. By emphasizing on those responses, we could reach into a conclusion that the turnover has impacted in a terrible way to the organizational performance in terms of the reducing productivity, lack of sustainable development, increased cost and time, insufficient training learning opportunities, and losing knowledgeable employees, etc. So as the conclusion, uh, overall, these findings have highlighted this, highlighted some important aspects to ensure the sustainable development through lifelong learning procedures in these organizations. And this will be really, really helpful and crucial in highlighting the need for the company to develop appropriate strategies, modern management techniques, and human resource practices in order to reduce its high employee turnover rate in the future. So, this is the acknowledgement of our resume. These are the references provided. And th thank you very much for your kind consideration. Thank you. Thank you in the night nice presenting. And the effect to high employee turnover on the technical staff of SLRC, Silanga Rubani Corporation, and Ravi Ramsey. It's nice to see you again. Uh, and so any questions from? Okay. Any any questions? Yeah. Anyway, I will I start with questions. Is there not a questions? Yeah. Uh, just asking, yeah, Ravi Ranji is a nice presenting and for the current situation of these uh, sample as uh, government sectors. And so, what so your recommendation you say, and I identify different different factors, I mean, then affecting the yes. turnover of technical staff, especially technical. So, not only this, you all of them, simply all of them, as facing the any specific strategies you recommending this institution. Uh, so uh, here uh, they have not uh, they have not identified sustainable development practices so they can look at those factors that are affecting to this turnover and they can reduce that for that they can use up updated uh, management practices uh, 
modern management practices and they can upgrade their technical equipment in order to reduce the job stress of their employees not only sri lanka rupahani corporation but also other organizations can also apply these techniques in order to reduce the turnover they can uh, give proper monetary benefits uh, like compared to their technical expertise and they can give a non monetary benefits uh, proper working hours uh, proper technical updates in order to work well and especially proper leadership practices can be enhanced and there should be a proper relationship in between the management and the uh, employees or technical employees in this case and um, they can be given proper training learning opportunities so they can enhance their knowledge skills and they can give their best to the organization so in that way organizations can enhance the motivation of the employees in one side on the other hand they can uh, over all the organizational performance efficiency and effectiveness can also be enhanced through this thank you thank you any anyone have anyone have any questions okay by everyone again so did you any doing the research this can kind of do you think this organization's culture will also affect do you feel any found any found way regarding the organization culture to be changed um yeah sir uh, when it comes to culture the leadership and the communication all uh, have to be embedded in this culture so there is no proper leadership like they are uh, technical employees leaders or their executive staff is engineers but there is like it seems like there is no proper relationship in between the engineers and the technical employees so the problems faced by these technical employees are not much um, uh, seen by these engineers and the management staff as well so there is a problem appro like approximately 8 to 10 employees are leaving the organization annually so there is an issue and it uh, it's in the public but uh, this management is not much aware about the situation because there is no proper leadership and especially there is no communication in between them um, so when it comes to other organizations uh, like other broadcasting organizations as well as other uh, water body electricity board the government organizations they are giving a uh, slight good uh, salary levels but here the it is not the case so i think that is because this cultural um, so no issue because yeah, thank, you. thank you thank you thank you very much and congratulations and thank you very much dr nayana sir Shall we move to the next? Yeah, the the presentation of the one paper ID one seven nine we have not received. Okay. So we can uh, go to the next one. The I don't. We can go to the next one is uh, yeah using traditional ecological knowledge. Eleven thirty. Yeah, because we will wait because. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we have to uh, start it at eleven forty. Eleven forty-five. Um, before this, because this recording. Yeah, it will start eleven. It will start eleven forty-five. It will start eleven forty-five, and and also in between there is a small break, and I would like to inform again to the presenters. and so as you send here ten minutes uh, presentation and followed by five minutes uh, question and answers and and pre recorded presentation will be played as per the schedule so that this one is not uh, we reached the recorded one of 179 and so and we 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 received the 224 and 211 to another two also and so we will continue on schedule as a schedule time and presenters please mute their microphone during the time when the recording are played uh, and also can up to the turn off the video but the turn on the video uh, your video in the question and answers and please do your chat options or hand raise options uh, to participate this uh, question and answers 
Dr. Naina, do you have anything to announce to anything at the days? To this time, this 15 minutes? Um, because, uh, um, because of the participants from uh, all around the world, with the times different, because of this time, lots given to these uh, participants, so we like to start schedule as a scheduled time. Document, you can you can share this sponsors information. Professor Yulog uh, we have some advertisements, so we will uh, play this uh, till uh, we'll try to play this for this uh, until 11.45. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. Okay, okay. okay we will start. On all four directions are works in stone and roundels of gold, broad the quadrangles, and mansions of mighty mold, tall the gabled houses and balconies. Where else, not on earth, but in heavens, are those of such elegance and girth. A nation steeped in history. A nation with incredible cultural diversity. Sustainable future, reorienting ODL 
to surmount challenges. With this theme, we intend to create intellectual spaces and opportunities for reflecting on the UNESCO concern of education as a means of sustainable development. As a founding member of the AOU, the Open University of Sri Lanka celebrates its 40th anniversary in 2020. We offer AOU our inimitable and peerless experiences to open minds and cultivate the notions of sustainable education. OUSL and AAOU. Let us expand the horizons of ODL. Are you looking for the ultimate events destination? The answer lies in an enchanting island, the events destination with the full package. Meetings, incentive travel, conferences, Exhibitions hosted in a place like no other, a place renowned for its smiling hospitality, with a splendid selection of five star hotels, boutique hotels, villas. and of course, enchanting beach resorts. An island nation with easy access to everything, international and domestic air services, transport facilities, including modern highways and superior communication. The land of a thousand unique experiences, glitzy super malls for shopping, Great destinations for adventure. Places rich in history and culture.
cuisine with the flavors of paradise. A truly unique destination for any event with endless possibilities for business and leisure. Thank you. Nice presentations. Nice promotion, then Sri Lanka <coughs> to enjoy your video. Uh, Dr. Naina, shall we start? Yeah, sure. Yeah, now we can. The time is correct. 11, yeah, next question. Yeah. 2024, using the traditional ecological knowledge of ODL as a strategic approach for the triple environment. So I think <clears throat> the presenters, Nikhil Hunt, Kumari Anchali, and Shubhas Ranjan Naya. Over to you. Namaste, respected uh, chairperson of the session and my fellow researchers participants. It gives me immense pleasure that I have been given this opportunity to present my paper entitled Using Traditional Ecological Knowledge by ODL as a Strategic Approach for Tribal Empowerment. The authors of the paper are Nikhil Khan from School of Management Studies IGNO, Kumari Anjali from School of Sciences IGNO and Subhas Taranjan Nayak from Regional Center of Bhopal IGNO, India. At the outset, I place on record my heartfelt thanks and gratitude to the organizing committee of 34th Annual Conference of Asian Association of Open University held at Colombo, Sri Lanka. The tribal peoples primarily depend on the natural ecosystem sharing a complex cultural relationship with them for their economic activities. They can play a significant role in sustainable natural resource management and con conservation while fighting against climate change. The impacts of climate change on their ecosystem-based livelihood leads to the loss of their traditional knowledge considered significant for successful climate action. Despite uncertainty prevailing with the origin of tra traditional ecological knowledge, that is TEK, it is broadly referred to as covering only ecological knowledge and not all the traditional and indigenous knowledge, and hence as an extension or subset of traditional knowledge. TEK is owned by tribal communities as a purposeful and practical knowledge evolved over innumerable years. Its global recognition in recent times has been in the context of sustainable development and environmental education by sustainable development goals. Convention on Biological Diversity, Multilateral Environmental Agreements, etc. It was usually ignored in education apart from policy formulation and research in the past. Using TEK to empower tribal peoples through dissemination of knowledge can be an effective strategy where audio system can come in handy for remote, remotely situated tribal learners. This study is an attempt to discuss how TEK as a tacit knowledge can prove to be a significant intangible resource in fetching competitive advantage for them with the help of ODL system using it strategically by reaching them in their own environment and surroundings in inaccessible areas. The objective of this study is to discuss the issue of using TEK by ODL system as a strategic approach for tribal empowerment through dissemination of knowledge in this era of knowledge-based economy. The research method used in this study is exploratory in nature based on the qualitative analysis as was found to be the most programmatic approach. The study used desk research for primary sources to cover recent development in the research field, literature reviews to cover published reliable literature on these issues, informal interviews with a few stakeholders selectively selected purposefully, and analysis of a few relevant cases elaborating various issues and challenges.
International Labor Organization by its uh, Convention 169 has provided objective and subjective identification criteria for them, which are usually known by multiple names. Uh, this convention prescribed an inclusive term indigenous and tribal people for ensuring single set of rights to tribal and indigenous people. These peoples were separated from surrounding ecosystems, misusing regulations and policies imposed in the guise of the attempts of ensuring natural resource management and conservation. TEK owned by these communities as an issue and needs to be recognized as the repository of various observations by different generations as they have huge potential to enhance survival of cultures and sustainability of resources. These peoples possessing TEK can contribute significantly as powerful agents of change in climate mitigation and adaptation efforts for successful climate. Harsa et al. in their study have identified modernization, modernization consisting of developmental activities, change in lifestyle and food habits, interventions of policies and social welfare programs, invasive and forest degradation, migration and occupational change as five major drivers in responsible for bringing about transformation in TEK. The critical role of TEK in climate action has explicitly been recognized by Paris Climate Agreement. The situation in developing country in the considering its potential in the economic analysis with respect to natural resources and conserving and promote, promoting TEK have not been appreciable despite its global recognition as a significant element for sustainable development. A strategy is contemplated to be human efforts made in order to meet desired results in the form of better shepherd future despite the scarcity of resources in the real world. Knowledge management in an organization helps in transforming tacit knowledge into explicit knowledge so that it can be spread amongst stakeholders. And in understanding the TEK as a strategic resource as a tacit knowledge, the SEKI matrix comes in handy, which can be helpful and consists of four modes of knowledge conversation, conversion, namely socialization, externalization, combination, and internalization. By bringing about improvement in the productivity, tacit knowledge can bring competitive advantage performing as an important asset to improve work quality, decision making, learning, accuracy, consumption of time and service. A study in the discipline of strategic management present that intangible resources such as TAK as a form of tacit knowledge are strategically more notable than tangible ones for the specific purpose of attaining competitive advantage. In previous few decades, ODL has emerged as a new teaching model showcasing its huge potential of helping people in teaching and learning without the barriers of place and time. The transformation envisaged in the learning paradigm in the phases of Teaching to learning facilitation to facilitated and supported inquiry has helped ODL system emerge as an effective learning mode across the globe. Challenges such as globalization of institution call for adoption of proactive approach by ODL system to address multitude of challenges with respect to newer needs, equity and rights. The unique teaching and learning activities of ODL highlight, highlights it as an educational process with teachers and learners separated in terms of space and time. The growth of ODL has immensely supported the developing countries in meeting the educational goals to attain sustainable development with matching support of ICT. ODL, ODL with the greater extent of flexibility and interactivity in learning has proved to be an important policy choice by majority of governments in the Asia and Pepsi region, highlighting its significance in dissemination of higher education. ODL system having flourished with the commensurate help of ICT can tackle the access related constraints and enhance capacity building. IPCC in AR5 emphasized the importance of TEK as a major resource of climate change adaptation which was usually ignored in policy formulation and research underscoring the immediate need of recognizing it and integrating it with scientific knowledge. In a world without scientific research into TEK, immediate attention needs to be given to integrate traditional and modern knowledge system with commensurate support of support of ODL system. Using TEK for teaching and learning to empower tribal peoples has been recognized substantially in recent studies as it, its use has become central in the philosophical arguments. ICT brings forth more cost-effective and feasible suitable tools to reinforce human interaction, collaboration, transfer of tacit knowledge. ODL system might successfully negate the potential danger to be faced by next generation of being devoid of the tacit knowledge despite the acquisition of explicit, explicit knowledge if it is put to use sufficiently for transferring it. ODL system can externalize and transfer tacit knowledge through optimum preparation, reflection, selection of appropriate illustration tools for learners to improve their performance using dynamic interactions and higher quality to exploit the attempts of various settler countries of integrated indigenous perspectives and education. Education needs to be restructured, restructured in order to overcome the challenges. 
Similarly, there is a need that Odeal institutions should intend to facilitate transfer of TEK owned by tribal peoples in the form of tacit knowledge and develop academic programs accordingly. The huge potential of Odeal system with the higher quantum of flexibility, openness and usage of ICT in addition to other various idiosyncratic and general characteristics can be unlocked if it is if it strategically uses TEK for achieving the long-term goals of tribal empowerment and sustainable future, using TEK can be an appropriate strategic approach of ordeal system for empowering tribal peoples utilizing its effective capability of reaching the unleashed. There is a need to assess its untapped potential in view of its utility in this knowledge-dominated era. Given the significant role of tribal peoples as change agent for sustainable growth, use of TEK by ordeal system can facilitate enhancement of their income generation capacity, negating the potential danger before newer generation of not receiving this tacit knowledge. Managing, preserving, promoting and transferring TEK can help in avoiding negative impacts of ignoring it on the modern era knowledge-based economy. Keeping in view the dismal performance of developing countries in using TEK sufficiently despite its its increased global recognition for sustainable future, its strategic utilization by ODL system for tribal empowerment needs to be assessed. Government policies of recognizing, protecting and promoting TEK and integrating it with Western modern scientific knowledge are significant. ODL should prioritize to use TEK strategically to provide solutions to different problems associated with tribal communities and empower them. TEK needs to be given continuous attention with the increased volume of its applications in future. That's all from the authors. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Professor Dai Jiu Sing. TK, the TK, traditional ecological knowledge uh, to the ordeal systems. Uh, any questions from this forum? No, because they are very interesting then traditional ecological knowledge transfer and so any questions so as usual then and I, as chairman i would like to raise one thing and mr nikal khan and kumar dianchali today's lunch and night and yeah, any example in the using this traditional ecological knowledge in Indian context or the South Asian can context easily uh, then explain any example and then which is can be transfers any any simple example to explain that. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir, for asking this question. This is Nikhil Kant, uh, uh, corresponding author and the primary author of this uh, paper. Basically, this is uh, an exploratory uh, kind of uh, paper that we have prepared. And uh, uh, the focus was on to uh, making an integration of uh, traditional ecological knowledge, knowledge which has emerged over the thousands of years and ODL which, has, which is still emerging. So it would really be uh, in a position to dovetail these two situations where there is something that had, uh, that have, that has been there for thousands of years. And now uh, that is also on the verge of extinction almost, if that is not preserved. And the second thing is that we have a modern effective tool like ODL, where uh, uh, these uh, could be integrated for enhancing the learning paradigm and learning uh, experiences. In the meantime, since we have been faced with the, the climate change uh, issues, which has uh, taken the shape of climate crisis, in fact, and uh, keeping in view the adaptation and mitigation uh, um, requirement uh, for the entire globe, we need to have focus on not only using them in uh, a sense that this would, uh, uh, I mean, facilitating the climate change activity, I mean, uh, 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 mitigating it adaptation, adaptation activities uh, for the purpose of the entire globe, but also would be helpful for uh, creating livelihood, poor livelihood for the tribal people in their own surroundings. So uh, in terms thank you, of- Thank you, uh, thank you very much. And any questions? That have been asked right now, uh, like uh, uh, traditional ecological knowledge, they are mainly, basically, yeah. traditional ecological knowledge. Uh,
Hello. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, any question for, for any any clarification? Any questions? And thank you for team so you then presenting those in traditional ecological knowledge. And so, <clears throat> Dr. Nayana, shall we move to the next? Yes, okay. So now time is up. You can start the next one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The last presenter is uh, the ID 112, the Cooperative Nursing Professional Education at OUSL. I hope. It's not Taisuke Tai is available. Yeah, the available Taisuke Dohari. Yeah, I saw his name. Yeah, the last name. Yes. Uh, Cooperative Nursing Professional Education at Open University of Japan. Taisuke Togari. Background. The aging population of Japan is increasing. The aging rate in Japan was 28.9% 2020. It is expected to be 13% in 2025 and 32.8% in 2035. With the aging of the population, it is necessary to increase the number of medical staff. The Japanese government has increased the number of nurse training centers in order to increase the number of nurse per population. In 2020, it became one of the OECD countries with the largest number of nurses. Professional nurses practicing density per thousand population. This is a change in the number of nurses per thousand people in OECD countries. Denmark Germany, Italy, Japan, Korea, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. The yellow line is Japan. You can see that it has been increasing little by little since 2002. Objective. Since 2004, Open University of Japan, OUJ, has provided education to help students qualify for the national nursing examination following request from the Japanese government. In this presentation, this educational service is introduced and trained among users clarified. Correspondence course with OUJ. The Japanese government and the Japanese Nursing Association, JNA, established a correspondence course in which nursing training schools cooperated with OUJ in order to promote the transition from licensed practical nurse and or associated nurse, AN, to registered nurse. However, the requirement to qualify includes seven years of work experience as an AN. In this correspondence course, students simultaneously attend two schools, a nursing training school and OUJ. They must earn 32 credits from OUJ and 65 credits from their training school. Registered nurse training system in Japan. There are many routes to qualify for the Japanese nursing national examination. Most are four year college or three year three-year nursing school courses on the left. 
On the other hand, to your correspondence nursing school, all right, is conducting collaborative education with Open University of Japan. All these students are qualified as associate nurse. In 2021, there were about 66,000 qualification of candidacy for the national nursing examination. Four-year college and three-year course of nursing school accounted for approximately 78% of the total. The correspondent school graduates accounted for 7.5%. 4% of all national exam qualifications. This is a change in the number of correspondence nursing schools and the number of students. The left axis is the number of students. The right axis is the number of schools. The blue bar graph shows the number of students. The orange line graph shows the number of schools. The nursing training schools cooperating with OUJ numbered one school and 219 students in 2004. 17 schools and 3,219 students in 2008. And now, 13 schools and 2,024 students in 2020. Recycling Type Nursing Cooperation Education Enhancement System Within the correspondence course, OUJ has established and provides 10 specialized subjects in nursing, as well as the standard liberal arts subjects. This correspondence course system has three groups of stakeholders, other than RUJ. Lead instructors who are professors at Japanese nursing colleges in the 10 specialized subjects of nursing. This conference makes rules about the ideal way of nursing subjects. Educational content, credit examination, correspondence guidance, etc. Correspondence Nursing School Association, CNSA, consists of school headmasters and chief clerks. And they summarize requests to OUJ, JNA, and government. And Correspondence Nursing Education Chamber. Uh, it's consists of OUJ Vice President, OUJ Professors, Ministry of Health, Labor and Wellness, and CNSA Chair, JNA Vice President, et al. They consider the measures requested by CNSA and the program, pro, programs presented by OUJ lead instructors coordinate the relationship with nursing policy. OUJ and teaching staff, the three professors are carrying out liaison and coordination activities with these stakeholders. Future issues. 
To ensure the future success of this program, it needs to be stable and sustainable. There are about 300 ANs in Japan. Recently, 1,500 to 1,700 people are newly AN every year. However, less than 10,000 people are migrating to RN. Information about this migration system needs to be more widespread as many AANs are unaware of its existence. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sending cooperative nursing professional education of Open University of Japan. Uh, Thank you, presentation Dohari. And then, any questions from forum? Any questions, please. Mr. Tasukito Gari, could you please uh, open your video? Okay, thank you. Um, just a moment. Yeah, okay. I do my part. That's Mr. Dohari. Yeah, any questions? Oh, okay. So, hello? Anyone? Hello. No. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your. Hello, oh. thank you. Mr. Dohari, Mr. Dohari, I have some. Is there a question? Process you look dancing. Process you look dancing. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, now we can hear you. Yes. I don't know whether there are any questions. Can you hear me? See there. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. I don't think there are any questions. Uh, I think then yeah. okay. still we have five minutes to go. Yeah, any So the participants, yeah. if there are any questions, say. So then, there's no questions. So we can conclude the program. Hello. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So then we 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 had the five papers. So this is a time to close. Over the out of five papers, we the thank you presenters. Four paper presented. Role of lifelong learning, and <clears throat> affecting high turnover the technical staff and reducing traditional ecological knowledge. Sir, may we have a, a group photo for this session?
So the last, the corporate nursing professional educations presented. Thank you, bro. Means the one interesting presentation, adult informal learning achievement. And we can read in from this, uh, our abstract. Um, so thank you very much for participating, especially particip participants and presenters. And also thank you very much, uh, our co-host, Dr. Nayana, and our other technical staff. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Yolognathan. Uh, and we will uh, conclude this session because we have to start the next session by 12.15. So thank you very much, sir. And thank uh, I thank, thank you all the presenters and all the, all the participants for this session. I thank all of them. Thank you. So now uh, we are about to start the AAOU selected papers for award session. Um, so we are in the uh, AAOU best paper award category. Um, the chairperson for this session is Professor Lee Kam Cheong, uh, the director of uh, research. At, oh, at the Open University of Hong Kong. And there are two judges, uh, Professor Siti Aisha Hazim, Hachim, uh, Professor at OU, Open University of Malaysia, and Dr. Sahid Majid, Director of Academic Planning and Course Production at Alama Iqbal, Open University of Pakistan. Uh, I can see the uh, the chairperson has logged in. Uh, I want to know whether the two uh, judges, whether they are there. Uh, there are two judges. I'm one of the judges and the chair of the adjudicating committee. Uh, committee. Uh, the other one is Professor Sahid. Yeah, sir. Okay, then uh, I would like to ask uh, all the presenters to uh, rename their, uh, rename them, uh, giving their um, paper ID at the, at the beginning and then underscore with their name so that we can identify them easily. I think we can uh, start the session now. Uh, it's over to you, Professor Lee Kam Chiang. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to see you all. Uh, welcome, welcome to this section. It is a very important section. Uh, every year, uh, we are very glad and is excited to see so many paper compete for the paper award. And it is one of the paper awards and it is, uh, this award is very much research oriented. It is for the best paper award. Uh, uh, there are many papers submitted to the conference and the conference host has selected a, only a small number to be further selected for this section. And out of the small number of paper, Altogether twelve. Then they are uh, then identified mm -hmm. for this final section. Uh, so the lucky ones, they are the uh, the ones that are going to be sent are the lucky six. Uh, they are the best of the best. 
So we are very glad to see you all. Uh, and I'll introduce them, you one by one. Uh, we have not met before, probably, uh, but uh, I'm, I very much look forward to listening to your presentation and together with all other participants. I believe that other participants are also eager to listen to your presentations as well. Uh, so may I now invite uh, uh, the, the authors of paper 34 to switch on your computer, uh, switch on your camera and into, uh, will you please uh, share your, tell us your name, your paper title, and then you may start your presentation. Now your presentation has a limited time. It should be, uh, if I remember correctly, it should be 12 minutes, am I right? Is it your understanding? It's 10 minutes for, for the presentation ah, and minutes. five minutes for, yeah, 10 minutes for the presentation and okay, five minutes, minutes for the question and answer so you, session. You, you are correct, sir. so 10 minutes only. So we have time. Uh, and you have to stop at the end of the 10 minutes. Uh, then after it, uh, uh, the judges may ask you questions first. Then uh, if we have no more questions, then the four may be given a chance uh, to ask you questions. Uh, the way you answer questions will be taken into consideration for your final score for your paper. This, this will be taken as the part of this consideration for whether you get the Go <laughs> award, silver award, and bounce award. So, uh, good luck to you all, uh, six paper presenters. Uh, let's begin with uh, paper ID 34. Over to you now. Will you please uh, sh tell us your name and then your paper title, and you may start. Yes. Uh, paper 34. Shall we play the record? Yeah, yeah. Will you switch on your cap? Uh, yeah. Uh, a microphone. We cannot hear you yet. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, I think the recording will be played. The presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would, you may share your PowerPoint and you may start your presentation. Uh, please tell us your name and your paper title first. You may start. You have 10 minutes. You see, this other discretion, nigga. Ah, hurry, hurry, hurry. Ah. Okay, you play it. Okay, you may start. Everybody who's attending this virtual conference today, it's my pleasure to introduce the research that I conducted with Dr. Chulani Herat from the Department of Psychology and Counseling. We are both from the Open University of Sri Lanka. Uh, we did this research study on depression, anxiety and stress among our undergraduate students. And this was a cross-sectional study. When we are talking about health, health is not simply physical health, but it's also about mental and social well-being. This is corroborated by the World Health Organization definition of health, which is holistic definition, which provides us the background to talk about mental health issues at the same level as the physical issues. So when we are talking about the mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and stress have been identified as the most common due to the prevalence rate worldwide and when we are talking about the mental health of university students that has also been identified as a public health issue so i introduce you to the three terms depression anxiety and stress now let's briefly have a look at these in a little bit detail so depression is known as the common cold of mental health because it affects one in four adults worldwide. And the symptoms include low mood, problems with sleep, appetite, concentration, and in extreme cases, suicidal ideation. And about anxiety, it's a future-oriented problem. So when you're talking about the definition, uh, it's defined as having anxious feelings about future accompanied by tension, worried thoughts, and also physical problems such as high blood pressure. And the next term is stress, or the next common mental health issue that I'm gonna talk about is stress. We all know something about stress, but let's have a look what is stress. Stress is the physiological or the psychological response to internal or external stressors. So it can be either. And it involves changes to every system of the body 
uh, and it affects our normal life. It causes fatigue, inability to concentrate, and it causes irritability among other things. And you can see how these three common mental health issues can have a significant impact on a student uh, health overall, as well as the mental health to continue their studies uh, effectively. Now let's have a look at how these issues manifest at university level. And as ODL lecturers, we all would identify that dropouts as a major issue. And that can happen with physical problems and also with mental health issues, this can exacerbate. And <clears throat> the problems with ability to work effectively, the problems that they would be having with relationships, either with peers or either as romantic partners, that can all come into a different level and can have a significant impact on the student's work. And also, if they're having any physical health problems, such as any non-communicable disease or any other physical health problems, they would be unable to take care of themselves. For example, taking medication, going to a clinic for the physical health problems, if they're also having a mental health issue, such as depression, anxiety, and stress. And burnout, you see it mostly with the employed people, and most of our students are employed also. So burnout from the university level and burnout from the working level can also have a significant impact on their work. And on extreme end, increased suicidal tendencies or suicidal ideation can also be seen due to the mental health issues. Now, there are a lot of research that has been done in Sri Lanka also with mental health of the university student. But what we find it, there is a gap where uh, the research lacks validated psychometric skills being used to measure the emotional distress. So we have identified that gap before we did this research. And also when you're looking into the Asian population research with mental health, you see using the confirmatory factor analysis for these psychometric scales has been recommended. So that is something also that we concentrated on. When looking into the OESL student population, there have been 30 to 40,000 student enrollments each year, and majority of them are undergraduates, and most of them are registering in the social sciences faculty, while the remaining are shared between the other five faculties. And our main objective was to assess the levels of depression, anxiety, and stress among OUSL undergraduates. But we also wanted to make sure uh, that the scale that we are using uh, can be confirmed with reliability and validity so it can be used in uh, future research also. And also we wanted to assist from the results that we get into the developing of interventions and policies on student mental health. This study was a cross-sectional questionnaire study. We had 1,096 participants who responded, uh, and they consisted of registered students at Open University who have completed one year of studies with us. And uh, we obtained ethical approval from the Columbia University Ethics Research Committee, and the participant provided written concept after they read the information sheet. Now let me briefly explain about the depression, anxiety, and stress scale, the DAS-21. There was an original version with 42 statements, uh, but we used the 21 shorter version. There were three scales. Each of these scales has seven items, which are statement, and the respondents were required to indicate the presence of these symptoms over the past week on the scale. So I, they would have to say, did not apply to me, or almost always. And this has been administered across cultures also. When we are talking about scoring, DAS manual allows us to categorize the participants into psychologically normal and psychologically distressed. And a further categorization is also allowed with the psychologically distressed participants. And they can be categorized into mild, moderate, severe, and extremely severe as per the scores they achieve in each of these subscale. But it has to be remembered that DAS is only a screening tool and not a diagnostic scale. Data analysis was done using SPSS as well as AMOS 24. And when we looked at the Cronbach Alpha of the scale, it showed high reliability indicating 0.8 level. 
from this slide, what you can see is our sample uh, included 19 to 30 year old as the highest percentage, which was about 68%. And there was a high concentration of female students, nearly 71%. And we had 72% employed students. This slide shows the results for the mean and standard deviation for each of the subscales of the DAS 21 scale. This slide shows how the three factor structure has been confirmed by the study results from this sample. Most important results now we are looking at is the levels of psychologically distressed. So as you can see, uh, stress and depression were not actually very prominent with this sample. But what you can see is uh, from the psychologically distressed uh, numbers, 51% nearly indicated anxious feelings and out of those also moderate anxious feelings were reported by 28 percent nearly 29 and severe by nearly 9 percent and extremely severe by uh, nearly 30 14 percent in conclusion what we found that more than 50 percent of participants were identified as having moderate levels of anxiety symptoms while the depression and stress levels uh, were normal for this sample so anxiety was the most commonly reported and we had uh, some concern over the severe to extremely severe psychologically distressed group who were proportionately small but indicated that they might need some mental health provisions to continue their academic activities and uh, this research actually prompted us to explore further into the causes of student anxiety and to develop and assist with any action plan. So as you can see, previous uh, studies also supported the results that we found with anxiety about uh, students reporting as a common issue. And on a methodological level, we were able to confirm the factor analysis structure. When talking about the limitations, this study was a cross-sectional study, so the results cannot be interpreted as causal. Second, our response rate was less than 50% of the available due to the time scheduling of different faculties. And third, these results can only be taken as an indication of psychological distress related to depression, anxiety, and stress, and not into a diagnostic level. As I have come to the end of my presentation, I want to acknowledge uh, this research was funded by the OUSL Faculty Research Grant and the Dean of the Faculty, the former Director of RES, uh, Regional Center Directors, OUSL staff and our research assistants deserve thanks for helping us. I wish to thank everyone who listened to us today and these are the references that we have used in this study. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gayani Gamarich. Uh, I hope I've not read your name wrongly. Uh, very well done. Uh, very interesting and inspiring study. Uh, may I begin with the first question for you? Uh, are your team member here as well? Are they here with you? Do you have uh, any other yes. team members? Yes. Okay. Are the my questions can be answered by anyone uh, of your, maybe answered by you or anyone in your team. Uh, I would like to know to what extent your study is unique to open education or distance education, uh, especially in terms of the results or the findings. Uh, yes, so this is actually because uh, in Sri Lanka, there's only one open university. So this is the first study that actually used uh, uh, a validated scale with the students of the open university. So it's quite important. But what we have seen is with other uh, universities in uh, Asian countries, uh, they have uh, they have looked into this because with the ODL student population, we also see that they are employed as well as studying. So it creates a conundrum, it creates uh, problems for them, extra burden compared to a con uh, conventional university. So that's, uh, that's uh, what we thought that uh, we need to uh, explore into this area of mental health with our students. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. 
uh, a good answer to my question. Uh, may I know whether the other judge, uh, uh, Dr. Sahid Majad, is here? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please repeat it again? Uh, I, I'm looking for the other judge. Uh, and okay, we'd like sorry. to see if he has any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Casey. Uh, it's a connectivity yeah, yeah. problem, so I just connected. Thank you yeah. uh, for start the sessions. Uh, I think I missed a few slides of the presenters. So you have the question from uh, the presenters. That that's okay. So on the next presenter, we will have uh, session uh, questions. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I have one more quick question for you. Uh, now, if you are given a chance to to be decide the study or to do it once again, uh, how how would you do it differently? Uh, yes, uh, definitely we will increase the number of uh, students that we can include in our study, but we will also add a qualitative uh, element to this. So we would like to do a mixed method study because uh, the numbers that we get the quantitative analysis is not sufficient to explore what are the reasons. So rather than assuming from the theoretical background, we would like to know from the first hand, from the participants' experiences, uh, what are their reasons for these um, anxious feelings, uh, these depressive thoughts, or their stress-related issues. If we can do uh, in-depth uh, qualitative analysis using either thematic or any type of uh, other qualitative analysis, that would actually strengthen the study and provide a basis for the quantitative data that we have already provided. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Very well done. Uh, but we are quite far away. Uh, I suggest that we all want you a round of applause. Thank you very much. Very well done. Uh, now, let, let's move on to the next paper. Uh, the next paper is of ID 68. Uh, they are prepared by Sabamana. I hope I've, I've read your names correctly, and Mohammed Sahir. Uh, and I see that. Um, Thank you. It's ready. Uh, so your paper is of the title, The Role of Extracurricular Activities in Increasing Student Engagement. I look forward to it. So over to you. Uh, I just want to go to identification. Uh, do I have to play the video or the video will be played uh, from your side? Uh, may I? Yes, we will be playing the video. Yes. Okay. You will okay. be playing the video. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please stop the video. Hello, I am Muhammad Zahi from Virtual University of Pakistan. Title of our paper is the role of extracurricular activities in increasing student engagement. Okay. Up. Explain to the Open and distance learning has been proved to be a viable source for making education accessible at minimum cost to all, regardless of gender, age, economic status, or physical proximity. Although distance education in terms of policies and procedures and technologies has progressed to a great extent, still few variables in the ODL chain are missing or are at infancy. Student affairs is one of those variables. Among various student-related issues, the most ignored one is extracurricular activities in ODL. Along with enhancing the physical and mental abilities of students, ECAs provide multiple benefits to the concerning educational institutions including student retention, better employability skills, enhancing student motivation and engagement. ODL institutions can also achieve the benefits offered by ECAs by making these a part of their academic calendar. Objectives. Few studies have highlighted the importance of extra and co-curricular activities in open distance education, but literature still lacks in providing a widely accepted mechanism of implementing ECAs in ODL institutions and its impact on non-traditional students. An ODL institute like conventional universities could achieve a balanced integration of academic knowledge, personal development, and extracurricular engagement provide a learning environment facilitating the personal and professional transformation of the students. The objectives of this research are to study the mechanism of conducting extracurricular activities in an ODL institute, which is a virtual university in this case, 
to see the impact of participation in extracurricular activities on student engagement. Literature reviews. Stuart et al. defined extracurricular activities as all activities beyond the classroom, such as involvement in university clubs, societies, paid and voluntary employment, family commitments, re religious activity, and internet activities. Via extracurricular activities, students' employability or work skills can be enhanced according to train. Law et al. in their study on business graduates found that students uh, who participate in extracurricular activities rate their creativity, communication skills, leadership and self-promotion skills higher than their fellow students who do not participate in extracurricular activities. Academic achievement is the most compelling factor for the parents and the students as all the students future endeavors depend on it. Stuart et al. linked high involvement in ECS with higher marks in academics. Hypothesis development. The focus of research has always been more on extracurricular activities at school or college level, while less work has been done on its role at the university level. And the studies are very scarce when we talk about the extracurricular activities in online distance learning institutes. It is easier for traditional institutions to arrange extracurricular activities at their premises to engage their students in open and distance learning. Setting the geographic dispersion and time constraints make it difficult for the institution to arrange such activities. According to Tucker, Non-traditional students are less interested in extracurricular activities as they have to balance their family, degree and work obligations and holding this view for many years, ODL institutions have ignored the importance of ECS but now the trend is changing. The research on connection between ECS and their impact on ODL students is still at its early stages. This study has tried to fill this gap by finding the relationship between the participation in ECS and students' engagement. Keeping in view the above literature following hypothesis has been developed. Participation in extracurricular activities increases student engagement. Extracurricular activities at Virtual University of Pakistan. A brief overview. Actually, Virtual University has divided its uh, extracurricular activities in two main groups. Activities where no physical presence is required and activities where physical presence of the students is required. When where uh, no presence is required, these are the uh, activities like online uh, programming competitions, online gaming, essay competition, photography competitions and where physical presence of the students is required are the games like cricket, hockey and other outdoor games. For such uh, games, announcements of the competitions are posted on LMS and on the websites of the student uh, life at VU website and then students participate at uh, local, then regional and then at the main level. The details of this procedure can be found in the paper. Methodology Target population were the students enrolled at Virtual University during the year 2013 to 2018. Since uh, uh, Virtual University started its extracurricular activities in 2013, that is why we have started students from 2013. It was a sampling, uh, purposive sampling approach which was used because only those students were considered who were part uh, of the university from 2013 to 18. Uh, the sample size was 907. Data collection tool was the questionnaire developed by Gunuk and Kuzu 2015. It had 11 items with two dimensions, valuing and sense of belongingness. It was a cross-sectional study and students were the unit of analysis. Reliability statistics show that uh, the questionnaire was quite reliable. It had Cronbach Alpha value 0.921, which is well within the reach. Data analysis. The primary aim of the study is to measure the 
effects of extracurricular activities on student engagement for this purpose two groups have been identified those who never participated in any extracurricular activities and those who participated in such activities table 2 shows group statistics code 1 was assigned to those who participated and two who did not participate so uh, 429 students participated in the activities and 478 were those students who did not participate in the activities student engagement and extra curricular activities an independent sample t test has been applied to measure the differences in the students engagement level with their institution table 3 shows the results of the t test it can be seen that levine's test was uh, insignificant which is the requirement uh, to assume that the, pop, uh, the both groups were the from, from the same population and the test was highly significant with p value less than 0.05 which was 0.02 so this shows that the students who participate in the extracurricular activities and students who do not participate in the curricular activities statistically significant now the dimensions of student engagement valuing and extracurricular activities table 4 shows the t test results of valuing participation in eccas does not affect the valuing of the student toward their institution it implies that students appreciate their alma mater in any case whether they participate or not participate this shows uh, this table shows that this the results of t test are insignificant that is 0.733 then the second dimension of the engagement is the belongingness belongingness and extracurricular activities table 5 shows the independent sample t test regarding the students belongingness uh, towards their institution it is evident uh, from table 5 that participation and non participation in ecs are highly significantly different and the mean values uh, were 3.9018 and 3.6213 which were statistically significant this is the table that shows that uh, the results of uh, t test are significant conclusion this study focused uh, uh, this study found that extra curricular activities in odl can be conducted successfully students of odl complain of being socially disconnected such practices can mitigate these negative perceptions regarding odl and vup has done it quite successfully it was also found that participation in extra curricular activities enhances students belongingness to their institution that may ultimately result in student retention and low dropout rates this study attempts to bring into light an attempt an important factor of student engagement in open distance learning that has been ignored since forever the study has provided empirical evidence that ecs are equally crucial for the conventional and non conventional learners thank you very much Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. Excuse Tahir. me, please. Excuse me, please. Can I uh, make a small announcement? This is to Professor Alan Tait. Uh, he should be in the session one, not in this session. Session one is for the best practice award. Uh, we have sent you the link in your chat. Please check in your chat and please log out from this session and join to that session because your service is needed there. Professor Alan Tait, this is for you. Okay, right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very okay, much. Let's have a general announcement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh uh Dr. Sahir Major, do, do you have any question for this team? Uh, thank you very much Dr. Zahir. Uh so uh, if I'm not wrong that what I had and uh, having your abstract about this study that's very interesting because of open university really missing this component of their students most of our students are mature students so they have the social development factors already they have in the in the early years of their ages so uh, this was the experimental in nature you have the five years data that's very interesting too so how you think that the in what aspect the social development of these students were developed by this practice 
Actually, the participation in such activities has uh, mitigated one complaint that they don't have social connectivity. So we, especially in the final round, we conduct at Lahore. So thousands of students arrive here. They are uh, uh, rested here. They are basically given accommodation and then they participate in different activities. So this social interaction enhances their uh, learning as well as it gives them a social, ex uh, social experience of interaction, which is generally missing in the uh, distance learning uh, universities or institutes. So that has an impact on their leadership skills and team building skills. So I feel that they were quite happy uh, after participating in such activities. That's good, but if I'm not wrong that you have uh, two sides and two uh, perspectives of this study, that one is online computations and one is in-person computation, means at the, at the campus. So how do you think that the online computations that develop the social matters and social aspects of the students? Yes, uh, social aspects, virtually social aspects are also addressed by, this, by, by these competitions. Yes. When students are competing with each other, for example, online gaming was one or online uh, uh, programming was one competition in which students from different cities of Pakistan participated simultaneously. So that gave them a virtual interaction uh, opportunity so that uh, whatever was missing uh, in the uh, distance learning was also catered. Yes, those students who participated physically had even better experience. Uh, that is right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, may I just one small question? Uh, sure. Your study was completed in uh, 2018. Uh, has the study been presented anywhere else before this conference? No, it has not never been presented anywhere. Uh, actually, it, uh, our, uh, our uh, competitions have ended in 2018 uh, due to certain reasons. And then uh, start of COVID prohibited us to go for uh, uh, these competitions in 2020 as well. So, uh, this data has been used just for this conference. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, given the time, uh, we have to move on. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for you. Thank you. Thank you very well done. Uh, now, let's move on to paper of the ID number 85. Uh, the paper title is Identification of Factors Affecting Program Completion at the conference hall, OUSL, a case study on engineering and science streams. Uh, that is a big team of authors. Uh, the first author is uh, DDM Wen Senhi. Uh, it's the presenter here with the presenter suite on the cam camera. Yes, the yeah. presenter is here, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, good. Okay, uh, would the conference host play the video of the presentation? We look forward to it. I am yes. Shandani Navaratna, attached to the Department of Mathematics of the Open University of Sri Lanka. The title of my presentation is Identification of Factors Affecting Program Completion at OUSL, a case study on engineering and science streams. This is joint work with a team of members from OUSL with different backgrounds. Dr. Anasinghe, Dr. Ratnayaka, and Mrs. Pasquel from the Faculty of Engineering Technology, and Professor Rajendra, Professor Bandarge, and myself from the Faculty of Natural Sciences, and Mrs. Dilsha from the Faculty of Health Sciences. Let me begin with a brief overview of my presentation. First, I will give the background to the problem and outline the objectives, then describe the methodology we have adopted, and then results and discussion and conclusion and further work. And finally, I'll offer some acknowledgement. Background. The Open University of Sri Lanka provides a pathway to higher education using ODL methodologies. 
This study focused on selected degree programs offered by the faculties of Natural Sciences and Engineering Technology of OUSL. Poor completion rates and longer time duration for degree completion are challenges that we face as teachers. Here we report the findings from a preliminary study carried out as a first step to achieve the goal of uplifting the learner pro learning process by improving learner support. When we focus on le learner support, it depends on many things, the learner requirements, of course, depending on the learner profile, their pre-enrollment qualifications and skills, their learner preferences, accessibility to resources, etc., will de determine the learner requirements. On the other hand, pedagogical improvement suggests kind of learner support that is best and for whom when and how the learner support should be given as well the capacity developments of the institution will permit us to provide different kinds of learner support the pandemic situation we are currently in provides a good example for this now we are using the zoom facility more often as a mode of learner support and this in essence indicate that learner support that is appropriate is dynamic and has to be customized to suit the learner and of course depending on the need at different stages of the program. To achieve the goal we have this set of objectives. We studied the association between explanatory variables and the response variables. As explanatory variables, here we have looked at learner related factors and institutional factors. And as response variables, we have looked at the likelihood of program completion and the time duration for program completion. Second objective is to identify the explanatory variables that are most appropriate as input variables for a predictive model that we plan to develop. Then we plan to use learning analytic tools to develop the predictive model using R and Python open source software. Methodology we have adopted. We have conducted a comprehensive literature survey and listed down variables for further study. And based on that, we have developed a questionnaire as a Google form, and the link was made accessible to students via SMS and my OUSL platforms. Sample population include all registrants for the degree programs offered by the two faculties in the academic year 2021. The sample included students at all levels of the degree program and those who had completed degree requirements and await for graduation. Identification of factors associated with time duration for program completion, we have applied the Kruskal Wallis test. And to identify factors associated with the likelihood of program completion, we have applied binary logistic regression. Results and discussion. Here you see a chart of cumulative percentage of completers against the number of years they have taken. Now these results are for the Bachelor of Science degree program, which is a three year degree program. However, as you see, around only about 1.4% had completed in three years. Around 26% had taken more than six years to complete. Even though it is not visible from this chart, data analysis indicated that the times taken for program completion with the, uh, by students with different entry qualifications were quite similar. Entrants with GC A-level qualifications and with 
a combination of A level and foundation uh, courses had completed in five years, whereas majority of students entering through the foundation program had taken a little longer and completed in six years. Factors associated with duration of program completion. We have looked at many factors and here we only report some of the selected variables. Gender has not shown a significant effect on the duration of program completion. And among the variables we have listed here, the age at initial registration and time management at entry, time management skills at entry had shown significant effects on the duration of program completion. This, the significance level we have used is 10%. With respect to factors associated with the likelihood of program completion, we had a drawback in our study. The sample did not include data on dropouts. Therefore, we had to be very creative to study this factor. And in our sample, we had individuals who have completed the degree requirements as well as non-completers. So we have selected students who have taken six years or more and among them we categorized using a binary variable as program completers and non-completers. So we studied here the program completion by taking program completion within six years. With respect to factors associated with program completion, we find that knowledge on English and the attendance, at academ uh, attendance for academic activities are the significant factors. They are significant at 5% level. Even though age at initial registration turned out to be a significant factor for the, pro uh, for the time taken for completion, it does not come out to be significant for the likelihood of program completion. Limitations of the study. One of the limitations, as I already mentioned, is the unavailability of data related to dropouts. So we had no way of comparing their learner, learner requirements with the learners already in the system. And also the results were based on the data collected from the respondents and we had no way of comparing whether non-respondents differ with respect to learner support requirements from the respondents. The study only focused on the time duration but did not focus on the performance levels of the students. This is another factor that is worth examining. Conclusion and further work. The study revealed that age at initial registration and time management skills at entry to the program show significant impact on the time taken for program completion. Knowledge on English and attendance for academic activities have shown an impact on the likelihood of program completion. Suggestions for further work. Here we only reported the results of of a preliminary exploratory study. We plan to develop predictive analytics, analytic models using open source software R and Python. As for the work, that is what we plan to do. Acknowledgements. We would like to thankfully acknowledge the support from the Vice Chancellor for granting permission to collect the data and of course the respondents for providing feedback to by duly fill in the questionnaire. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Uh, may I know if Dr. Sahir Macha have any questions for the presenter? Uh, thank you very much, Dr. TC. Uh, thanks for the presenter. It's very interesting. Somehow having some relationship with uh, with the first study, which I missed, but the title having almost uh, overlapping the concept. 
uh, I have two questions uh, from the presenter uh, that you have missed the data that is uh, dropout. So I'm not sure the how much dropout uh, was there. So, but you have another data that is 74% completer. So 74% completer uh, is a big data. Uh, what you recommend to the university that they have more completion in the timelines that they have standards timeline like three years or four years, what you recommend to your university? Well, with respect to completers, the 74% is the percentage who complete within a period of uh, five years. And when we take the whole group, there are dropouts we have missed because we have not included them in our study. Usually, we, we if we take the BSc degree pro program, for instance, we register each year around uh, 1,300 students, but uh, close to 300 graduates. So we have dropouts. And also, we have students taking very long time periods. The 74% refers to the percentage completing within five years among the completers in our sample. So what's your recommendation to your university? Sorry? What's your recommendation after this study? Because we, we might be missing the slide of the la after discussion. What you recommend to your university, in particular for this program, that the university has to have uh, the age factor for it, for the admissions of these students? Well, my, my first recommendation would be because we have a large amount of data, but they are, they are, they are separate in different places. Where with respect to uh, learners, we have lots of data. For example, when they collect the course material and uh, about the commitments, how they engage in studies, participation in day schools, we, we don't have a database incorporating all of those. I think uh, it will be very useful coming into this uh, age with uh, available tools for uh, predictive analytics. I think that is what we should target for. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, one of the uh, co-authors of the uh, paper uh, so one recommendation that we can add on is to strengthen the English programs, uh, English educating programs in the university because it has shown from our studies that uh, the uh, English knowledge requirement is essential. So uh, that is one aspect that we would uh, like to recommend to the universities to uh, give supportive, uh, uh, supportive um, actions to strengthen the uh, knowledge of English for the undergraduates. Yeah, that, these are the two main uh, findings of your study. The one is age and second is the English language. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, very well done. Uh, so uh, another round of applause for you. Well done. Okay, uh, in, in the interest of the time, uh, let's move on to the next paper of the ID90. Uh, the title of the paper is Factors Affecting Learners' Perception Towards E-Learning During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, the authors are RHAT Pereira, as well as Anne Abasekara. I hope I've read your name correctly. Are the authors here? Sure. Yes, 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 you are here. Okay, uh, would the content host please play the video of the presentation? Open in mind for a sustainable Good. future, reorienting ODL to the mount challenges. We are RHAT Pereira and an Abesekara attached to Department of Marketing Management Faculty of Management Studies, Open University of Sri Lanka. Our topic is Factor Affecting Learners' Perception Towards E-Learning During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Introduction Technology plays a vital role in the education all over the world. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic has made universities and 
higher education institutions rely more on advanced technology to conduct their respective study programs. eLearn is an online learning and teaching platform developed by Open University of Sri Lanka to enhance their learning and teaching experiences. So in that period of the COVID-19, that e-learning system helped to deliver lectures to numerous learners with an opportunity to engage and interact with expert and allow the expert to assess learning progress at the same time. Learners have the liberty to adjust the time, place and content to learn meanwhile the learning system can deploy best online teachers and deliver the content supported by rich multimedia and content with the latest updates. E-learning was reported to have less active participation of students. It is benefited than flexible for students to access the system at any time, any place. Even though previous studies found that e-learning has a high dropout rate than face-to-face -face, uh, programs, especially that Dougal Atoll and Patterson and these kind of previous researchers found that e-learning has a high dropout rate than the face-to-face -face program. During the pandemic, OUSL don't have ability to conduct physical lectures. Therefore, it is imperative to investigate the factors affecting learners' perception toward e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic, such that all stakeholders could pay more attention to addressing these issues and assist students to learn better. Several models have been used to study of that e-learning uh, to investigate the factor affecting learning perception toward e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. We identified main major two objectives while we are conducting this research. First one is to identify the factors affecting learners' perception toward e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Second one is to identify the most influential factors that impact on learners' perception toward e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Literature Review when we are concerning the uh, so many literatures, finally we identified two kind of theories which suitable for our study. First one is the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology. Second one is Dillon and Maclean IA success model. Uh, according to the UTAUT model, we identified that uh, it is more suitable for uh, measure the individual acceptance as well as Dillon and Maclean IA success model we use to measure the e-learn quality. According to the previous research, we identified several other factors which under the two models. First one is performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence, system quality, and uh, information quality, and service quality. Uh, by uh, using the previous literatures and previous studies, we build up our hypothesis. These are the uh, our hypothesis and each and every hypothesis we build up based on the previous literatures. Based on the literature review, we build up our conceptual framework. We identified several independent variables as well as dependent variables. We identified that performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence, system quality, information quality and service quality as our independent variables. At the same time, we identified dependent variable as in the, uh, intention to use e-learn. Methodology. We concern our population as all management undergraduates in Open University of Sri Lanka. When we concern our sample, uh, we select 163 management undergraduates in Open University of Sri Lanka. Then we use a convenient sampling method and we used a structured question yeah, with closed statement measured with liquor scale. By the way, we use uh, descriptive statistics as well as univariate statistics and multivariate uh, statistics to evaluate the, our objectives then after that uh, we you can see here a uh, reliability test that each and every variables uh, have uh, more than 0 0.7 alpha value so we can say that our instrument is reliable so we are in data analysis so in according to the data analysis first at all we would like to explain democratic information you can see here we identified that uh, most of our participants from Colombo Regional Center as well as most of the participants who are in, uh, in the in, uh, they are studying in their English medium as well as when we concern the computer literacy of our participants uh, most of the participants who have good uh, level of their uh, computer literacy it is um, almost more than 79 percentage then we 
when we concern the preferred time for login, we, you can see here that most of the respondents they uh, prefer to log into the e-learn in between uh, 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. So when we are uh, when we are doing some courses, when we are uh, preparing some courses we have to concern this time schedules also then login uh, e-learn so when we concern the uh, devices that most of the student who uh, use their mobile phone rather than the other devices when we concern status of education most of the uh, student who are uh, uh, not not only they are doing education they may uh, they are the person who work in the uh, any other sectors so after that when we concern the mean and standard deviation you can see here performance expectancy and social influences have highly uh, highly uh, influenced to the perception of e-learners e-learn system so and when we concern the mean and standard deviation of each and every regional centers you can see here that uh, different kind of variables may influence to the different uh, regional centers when we concern as example of the uh, uh, badula center that you can see here they mostly concern the performance expectancy rather than the other uh, variable so in this way we can identify different regional centers have different re uh, pre uh, preferences regarding the each and every uh, factors when we concern the regression analysis adjusted r square value is a uh, 0.670 in the model represent 67 of the observed variabilities in intelligent use e-learn can be explained by the differences in both independent variables uh, remaining 33 percentage of the variance intention to use e-learn related to the another variables which can uh, have an influence on intention to use e-learn that could be referred as a scope of future research when we concern the coefficients value we can see here performance expectancy effort expectancy social influence as well as service quality uh, have the uh, less than 0 0.05 significant value so those are significantly impact on uh, e-learn but when we concern the system quality factor and in, uh, information quality factors those uh, significant value is higher than 0 0.05 so which indicated that uh, those variables are significantly not impact on e-learn uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic hypothesis testing you can see here performance expectancy effort expectancy social influences as well as service quality that significantly impact on learners behavior intention to use elen so we accepted that hypothesis and then after that we can see here system quality and information quality that significantly not impact on learners behavior intention to use elen so uh, we have to reject that those hypotheses Based on these things, we conclude our research findings. This study contributes to the theory and practice in many ways. Although most of the studies explore the same problem with the certain variables, this study has attempted to incorporate two models such as UTA-UT model and Delon and Maclean uh, information system uh, success model according to the study performance expectancy was the most influential determinant of behavioral intention to use e-learning system based on the past research and that uh, observe that the performance expectancy is an indicate fact to predict to usage intention of the new technology in operations according to the research, current research also identified that performance expectancy positively and significantly impact on intention to use elen further effort expectancy social influences and service quality also significantly impact on intention to use elen researcher further identified that system quality and information quality not significantly impact on intention to use elen so this is references and thank you. This is time for question and answers. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, uh, may I ask my first question? Uh, now, I'd very much like to know uh, how all of us uh, have understood the design of his study. Now, uh, for your research team, uh, if you are given a chance to redo the study, uh, how will you do it differently or will you do it in simply the same way? 
yeah that uh, our main thing is uh, we know that our sample size is 163 because of the covid 19 pandemic we are unable to collect more and more then definitely we have to go for the high number of sample and next thing is uh, then we concern about the uh, again the two models but when we following up that uh, some of the other literatures we identified in according to the regression also another factors may be influenced so we are plan to uh, that uh, in the one out of the other factors influence to the learners and these things we have to ex uh, expand our area and a special thing we like to expand our uh, study uh, throughout the each and every regional centers because we have seen in the, our presentation that different there are different findings in the different regional centers because of the, uh, the there may be reasons different reasons so we we if we have a, a plan and to uh, uh, doing that expand our study definitely we have to concern each and every regional centers in separately mm -hmm. now you you just mentioned that you will expand the sample size uh, how would you decide how big the sample size is a suitable one how will you decide uh, then uh, firstly uh, then uh, our total population we concern our problem population is uh, 3,500, but in that period, uh, then we uh, normally that our management degree program, we have for, uh, four levels, level three, level five, and level six. But unfortunately, the level three and level four students who have uh, able to select different uh, languages as well as most of the students who ca carry out their studies in exactly that, that the first two levels. So based on that, we identified our population and we reduced our population as less than the uh, two, uh, 200. Then after that, uh, based on the, that 200, we identified our sample uh, size as 200. But unfortunately, based on the, this COVID-19 pandemic and that uh, data collection, we collect that uh, more than uh, 202. Yeah, I, I thought that 202 data, but unfortunately, some of the data are not, um, uh, can, can't be uh, getting for the uh, analysis because some of the um, things are not completed. So we uh, reduce that particular data. Finally, we conclude our data size is uh, 163. That's the, that's the thing that happened. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, does Dr. Sahir Maja have any questions? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, presenter. Uh, I, I have a one question because Dr. Casey having uh, uh, questions about the data and different factors that might be need more consideration about this study because so the data that we have presented in the first that is uh, the, the data analysis with the regional centers you have mentioned the Colombo is 87 participants and frequency but rest of the number are 76 that might be we need more uh, information about that then you have English a uh, computer literacy is good, might be that is because of the Colombo participation or the participants than mobile phone use that might not having the same uh, matter with, with the rest of the regional centers and the status of education that is part time. The one factor that you have mentioned is very important the time, prefer time for login. That is uh, 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. And the second one is 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So that's required also some work elaboration. But my question is about your question, uh, about your tool of uh, study. You have mentioned the reliability. How you check the validity of your tool? How you check the validity of your tool of it or instrument yeah. that you use? Yes, the content validity we uh, we you, you measured by using the we, we have been given the questionnaire for industry experts by giving the experts in the particular pe uh, pe like specific period uh, we have test the content validity that actually been already tested in the questionnaire because there are certain wordings which we can't just uh, like copy paste we have to have certain adjustment according to Sri Lankan culture there should be a certain localization need to be adapted. So the content validity part has, has been tested. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your paper yes. and your very, very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Well done. 
Uh, uh, in the interest of time, let's move on quite, very quickly to the next paper of the ID 189. Uh, the title of the paper is Relationship Between Learning Strategies and Academic Performance, and that is a subtitle under it. Uh, there are, I can see four authors. I believe that the authors are ready for the presentation. I can see you on the, you have your camera on. So uh, would the conference host please pay the video of the presentation? We look forward to it. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tan Sofen from Wawasan Open University. Today, I would like to present my article entitled Relationship Between Learning Strategies and Academic Performance, a comparison between APEL and regular entry undergraduates. APEL stands for Accreditation of Prior Experiential Learning. It is a systematic process that involves the identification, documentation, and assessment of cumulative prior experiential learning to determine the extent to which an individual has achieved a desired learning outcomes for access to program of study or award of credit. In Malaysia, APEL was introduced in year 2011, and there are three types of APEL. APEL for access, APEL for credits, and APEL for qualifications. In our study, we only focus on APEL for access, APEL A students, and we call those students as APEL entry students. APEL A certification is an indication of competence and readiness of applicant to pursue a particular program. In Malaysia, APEL A was of, is offered from certificate to master level. But in our study, we will only focus on undergraduate students. That means we only focus on students who are at diploma and bachelor levels. Not many studies have been found to conduct to explore the, uh, the difference between academic performance of APEL and regular entry students. Latifa and her colleague and Awang and his colleague have reported that regular entry students perform academically better than APEL entry students. But Cheng and Xiao reported that there's no significant difference in academic performance between these two groups of students. So we can see that the findings were not consistent. So in our, in our study, we would like to study again where, to explore whether there is a significant difference in terms of academic performance between these two groups of students. There are also many studies that have conducted to explore the relationship between learning strategies and academic performance. And the researchers have reported that some learning strategies are positive predictor of academic performance. Although many studies have been carried out to explore the relationship between learning strategies and academic performance, research related to learning strategies used by APEL entry students remain limited. So there is a research gap to be filled. So in our study, we explore the the, whether there is a significant difference in terms of academic performance and learning strategies between APEL and regular entry students. And then, for both APEL and regular entry students, we explore whether there is a relationship between their learning strategies and academic performance. This study used quantitative methodology approach and we use correlational research design. The methods of data collection are archival data and questionnaire. In our study, Academic performance refers to the CGPA of the students, which is the cumulative point grade average of the students. Learning strategies. There are two sub-skills of learning strategies, which are cognitive and metacognitive strategies and research management strategies. Participants. We have sent our questionnaire to 4,452 undergraduates and 410 regular entrants and 
190 APL entry students completed our questionnaire. Data analysis. We imported our data into SS for analysis and we conducted um, independent sample t-test and Pearson correlation analysis. Findings. <coughs> So it was found that there is a significant difference in terms of academic performance between regular and APEL entry students. In terms of uh, learning strategies, there is no significant difference between these two groups of students. For regular entry students, only metacognitive self-regulation, time and study environment management, effort regulation and help seeking were positively correlated with their academic performance. Whereas for APEL entry students, only time and study environment management and effort regulation were positively correlated with their academic performance. Discussion In our study, we found that regular entry students perform slightly better than APEL entry students. Our study, our findings is in, <coughs> in line with the studies reported by Latifa and her colleague and Awang and his colleague. But Cheng and Xiao um, reported that there's no significant difference in academic performance between these two groups of students. The inconsistency in findings could be caused by institutional factors. Some institute may have a better support system which enable their APEL entry students to perform equally well as their regular entry students. For both regular and APEL entry students, time and study environment management and effort regulation are positively correlated with their academic performance. This could be because they are adult learners, ODL learners. ODL, the learner, are always known to have a lot of challenges because they need to study off campus and they have work and family commitment. So it is very important for them to be able to manage their time and study environment and regulate their effort in order to perform well in their study. For both regular and APEL entry students, there is no significant difference between peer learning and their academic performance. This could be because they are ODL learners and they are very busy with their work and family, causing them not being have time to study together with their peer. Help seeking. It was found that help seeking is positively correlated with the regular entry students academic performance but not correlated with the APEL entry students' academic performance. In conclusion, these are the <coughs> summary of our findings. And from our findings, we would like to suggest that university may provide students with guidelines to Man time management skills when they first started their study in order to prepare them to be able to manage their time well and ultimately being able to perform well in their study. The university also can provide several in-person sessions for the students to meet their lecturers and uh, tutors and peers from time to time throughout the semester. This would enable the APEL entry students to generate closer relationship with others and ultimately be willing to seek help from others when they are in need. Future studies can be conducted using a wider sample of distance learners from both regular and APEL entrants and future researchers can compare other personal tracks between these two groups of students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And it offers a lot of insights. Uh, 
Apple is something unique, uh, very, very much important to the ODL field. Uh, can I ask the first question? So regarding your results, uh, to what extent are the results a surprise to you, or just it is just something that you could already expect before you carry it out to the study? Um, actually, um, we we thought that there would be a lot of difference in terms of academic performance between the regular and APL entry students, but then. Uh, the result shows that there's only slight difference between these two group of students. This is something that surprises. Yeah. And then, um, although there is also only slight difference in terms of their academic performance, we would like to, um, we, we actually plan to uh, extend our study by looking at uh, other factors that causing them not being able to perform equally well. For example, okay. we plan to interview uh, the APEL entry students and we would like to explore more on uh, what type of challenges that they face when they are studying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, may I know if uh, Dr. Sahir Majad have any questions for this team? Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, the topic of your study is a relationship between learning strategies. And you have mentioned the learning strategies that you use uh, by following different models and uh, definitions about cognition and metacognition. So what you found in your studies that regular entrants as well as the Apple, they, they, they are using the same learning strategies or they are using different learning strategies for their academic performance. Um, when we are comparing the two groups, there is no significant difference in terms of learning strategies they use. But then, when we, we look at the learning strategies that is correlated with the academic performance, there is a difference. Yeah. So, as you can see in our slide, for APEL, uh, for regular entry students, there are four types of learning strategies that is correlated with their learning, uh, with their academic performance. So those are metacognitive self-regulation, time and study environment management, effort regulation, and help seeking. But then for APEL entry students, there's only two types of learning strategies that are correlated with their academic performance, which are time and study environment management and effort regulation. Yeah. You also, you also have mentioned that you use the learning strategies of cognition and metacognition. Do you think yes. that, that the, these two terms are equal? No. Cognition they are different. and metacognition because these are two different things. Yes, the, these are two different things. Uh, for cognition, um, they are rehearsal, elaboration, organization and critical thinking and then metacognitive self-regulation is at a higher level yeah they have a higher to... thinking yes yes and we found that uh, uh for regular entry students only um metacognitive uh, sorry for regular entry students metacognitive self-regulation is correlated with the academic performance but then for apel entry students it is not correlated with the academic performance. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, that's my PhD is a metacognition learning strategies. That's why I'm more interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you for your too. question. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your presentation and for answering our questions effectively. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, a round of applause for you. Thank you, very well done. Again, in the interest of time, let's move much. on. Uh, let's move on to the last paper for this section. Is paper of the ID 212. The title of the paper is a visual analysis of the research progress in the view of student support services in China using uh, size-based biometrics. 
So very interesting. Uh, we have two or there are two offers for this paper. Uh, are you here, offers? Uh, Wei Tang and Dai Jiang. Uh, yes, I can are you hear. Here? Okay, great. Okay, would the conference host, will you please pay the presentation video? I can't share my Oh, you would like to share your slides? You would like to present them? Okay, Hello, the, the video is being paid. I'm Wen from Jiangsu Open University of China. Today, my presentation is titled Research Hotspot and Trend Analysis of Student Support Service. Visual perspective based on that space people need merits. On this subject, five parts will be presented one by one, namely introduction, research design and methods, data statistics, research hotspot, frontier analysis, and conclusion. As everyone knows, effective student support service is the key element of modern distance education, which can recognize students' active learning behavior, guarantee their academic progress, and promote their overall development. The definition of student support service aligns with learner support. From the logical starting point of the research, it originated from the distance teaching practice of the Open University of Britain. Then, the theoretic system of student support service constantly perfected and from the takership to the metro system, Moreover, it has been introduced into the domestic distance education practice by Chinese scholars as a key factor to improve the quality of distance education. The second part is the research design and methods. The sample data of this study are collected from CNKI. The search time of this study was November 5, 2020. A total of 1,210 articles are selected from the CSSCI database and core journals. The annual distribution of the number of papers is shown in Fig 1. And then, we use that sweet software to deeply explore the rules behind the core literature and the development frontier of subject knowledge, and conduct a visual analysis of the research progress in the field of student support service in China. The third part is data statistics of relevant research on student support service in China. As shown in Fact 2, we find two interesting phenomena. One is that distance education researchers are the main study groups in the field of student support service. The other is that the core group of authors needs the research trend of student support service. Actually, we conducted a visual analysis on relative institutions in the field. As shown in Fig 3, on the one hand, studies on the subject is given priority to with radio and TV university education system. This shows the high student support service and distance education feed. It's an important research object distance education field and practical results. On the other hand, there is no overwhelming community of research institutions across regions, schools, and education fields, which is not conducive to the independence and the promotion of research in this field. The first part is the hotspots of student support service research in China. As shown in Fig 4, we can see that learning support service, distance education, modern distance and open education, open university, open education, and network education, AR, as keywords for this research in the field of high-frequency keywords. 
but subsequently, in consideration of its frequency and centricity and the synonymous after merge, this paper took 25 high frequency keywords according to the frequency sequence as shown in tip 1. We found that the concept of student support service earlier appeared in lifelong education, lifelong learning, open university related study. Since then, there has been a high degree of integration between student support service and distance education and open education. Therefore, the research results of this change focus on the professional support service in the context of the relative separation of teachers and students. Big 5 is the time sequence diagram of student support service research. It can be seen from that with the popularization of information technology and the generalization of online learning. Student support service also moved to CMOOC and XMOOC research topics and rest a hot wave of research. At the same time, it also arrested the court thinking of some of the radical researchers. The last part is the research conclusion and frontier analysis. By means of set space word exploration function, the top 25 keywords with the highest prominence value are sorted out. As shown in Fig 6, on the whole, the emergence time span of this emergent word is from 1996 to 2020. After 2011, with the popularization of mock teaching, student support service are also seen as the key to alleviate the dropout problem of learners. At the same time, with the transformation and development of Chinese radio and TV university, Opera University has become a research hotspot, which is also an important orientation of a future development of trend. From the above studies, we can draw the following four important conclusions. First of all, student support service is the inherent gene of modern distance education. It can be predicted that in the future, modern distance education will always be the hotspot and the focus of academic research, including the optimization of distance education studies support service system the remodeling of service connotation, the improvement of service accumulation, and the study of the interaction between support service and education quality. Secondly, student support service actively promote the sustainable development of marks. With the deep integration of information technology and teaching, great changes have taken place in the form of teaching organization and the learning mode of students. At the same time, student support service is also regarded as an important part of network teaching and mixed teaching, which has aroused the attention of education researchers. Thirdly, the optimization of student support service always goes in the same direction as the reform of teaching mood. Whether the student support service is perfect will directly affect the learning experience of learners and then affect the process of teaching reform. Therefore, whatever there is a keynote of teaching reform, there will be corresponding improvement and reflection on the exciting student support service and the continuous improvement of student support service will also promote the optimization of teaching mode. Finally, student support service is an important way to deal with the plight of dropout. Since 2011, the phenomenon of dropout has attracted opting attention from academic zeros and educational practitioners. 
faced with the high dropout rate, scholars have conducted a diversified research on its cause, influential mechanisms, and dropout routes. In order to solve the dropout problem in MOOCs, it can be predicted that the box on the topic of dropout is not only the direction of the reform and efforts of the student support service, but also the trend and the box of future research in this field. This is my speech for today. Thanks for your listening. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, may I firstly see if uh, Dr. Sahid Majad have any questions? Please go ahead. Question? No, yeah. please. Oh, uh, I have a, a question for you, uh, uh, Wei Tang. Uh, uh, there has been a lot of study uh, based on bibliometric. Uh, now, but uh, quite a lot of people are wondering whether bibliometric reflects the reality that is uh, uh, re that the research is going to reveal. Uh, take yours, for example. You are going to you very much would like to see what is happening actually in uh, in our area, but it's. But if you use bibliometric, to what extent do you think it, it really reflects the reality? Could, could you share your experience and view with us? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, because you are just using statistics information from studies. Uh, to what extent do you think it helps? Uh, yes, the sample data of the, the, this study are collected from BNKI. And uh, this study choose seed space uh, appear in the form of a knowledge map and the statics from con conduct made processing result. Uh, deep excavation crawl behind the frontier knowledge of NOR and uh, discipline development and uh, highlight the world con container by keywords. Uh, so uh, com combined with the second literal review to find the hottest research topics in this field and uh, make uh, um, quantitative rule nice and uh, uh, pre prediction. So uh, it's true. Mm -hmm. Now, my next question is uh, about the way you study. Uh, now you, you can see quite a lot of Chinese characters in your slides, right? We can see uh, yes, many yes, Chinese characters. So you, man, 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 man. Uh, so you, you use Chinese characters for your studies. Uh, uh, yes. So it's based on Jiangsu Open University. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think translation could be critical in understanding uh, how the study had carried out and uh, how the results should be presented? Uh, uh, we, we collect the information from school uh, and uh, in interview some teachers, some students, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do it. I, I wonder if uh, Sahid has any more has any question for this particular paper, and whether other participants has any I questions. Any question. I don't have any question. You have asked. Oh, I know. I know. This is your yeah. favorite. But one Excuse of the me. participants, she raised her hand, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, 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 Rebecca raised her hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Rebecca, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about uh, Ms. Tang's research. And uh, so from Ms. Tang's research, 
So do you think there are certain phases existed in the study of student support service by Chinese scholars? And uh, what are the characteristics of hotspots during each phase? And uh, what would be the following tendency of the research on this topic? Okay. Uh, oh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, through the research, we find that Chinese scholars' research on the topic of student support service has certain strategic characteristics. The concept of student support service um, earlier appeared in lifelong education, lifelong learning, open university um, related study, and uh, since 1999, um, the learning support service distance education contemporary and non-range education has caused the attention of scholars. So make learning support service and student support service has, has become the research hot spot. Uh, and the funding embodied in the reform education and the network education teaching practice. Uh, since then, there has been a high degree of integration between student support service and uh, distance in education and open education. Therefore, um, the research results of this stage focus on the professional support service in the context of the relative uh, separation of teachers and uh, students. And uh, through, the, uh, through the visual analysis of the research time, we find that with the popularization of information technology and online learning, Modern education relationship has uh, shifted from one-way transmission of, of knowledge to the interactive process between the main body. Uh, a single study support service is not very good to satisfy the whole process of education teaching. Therefore, since uh, 2002, researchers studying the integral design of the learning support service system and the uh, study support service also moved to CMOC and XMOC research topics and uh, uh, reached a hot view of research. And uh, then we find after 2010, based on the large scale use of mobile terminals, mobile, mobile learning has become the focus on research in the field. After 2011, with the early age of uh, more teaching, learning support service are also seen as the key to alleviate the dropout problem of learners. At the same time, with the transformation and the development of Chinese radio and TV university, open university has become a research hotspot, which is also an important direction of future development. Uh, this, is, this is our study. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your elaborated answers. Uh, uh, very well done. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so would participants please join me to offer our round of applause to this very good paper. Okay. Uh, so we have completed all six papers, six presentations, uh, all very well done. Uh, and the organizer will finalize the scores for the six papers and tell you the results. Who will get the gold medal and which two will get the silver medal for this particular uh, round. So uh, we, I, I can only wish you good luck for the time being. Okay, thank you very much for your participation, both the authors and the participants. Thank you very much for attending this section. Uh, uh, we have overrun a little bit. I'm sorry for this. Uh, uh, please come again. Uh, before at, excuse yeah, me, please. Yeah. Uh, before uh, we end, uh, end up the session, we would like to ask all the participants, uh, the chairperson, uh, the judge, uh, and the, um, all the presenters, to open their uh, videos so that we can take a photograph. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> Let's all screen switch print. on our, yeah. our cameras. Yes. So please open please up your, uh, your... Open your videos.
Yeah, switch on your camera. Yeah. Oh, the presenters. I see that some of you are doing up your hair. <laughs> that look good. Okay. You are going to take camera, take a photo of all the bus. Okay, let's all switch right. on our camera. Thank you very much. Uh, no, no, so wait. Um, Okay, okay. Wait. Nice. Please wait. Okay, so many of us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, presenters and organizers. I work very hard for this conference. Thank you, Dr. Casey. Thank you, Sahib. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the chairperson. Uh, now uh, we are about to conclude, but I had to remi remind all of you that uh, we have the second keynote address after this session that is about uh, ODL for Sustainable Development by Professor Asha Iskhanwar, the president of the call Canada. So please join that. Uh, so thank you very much for all of you, especially the chairperson and the judge for your excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your great comments and thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye.